welcome to One Cricket Exclusive. My guest today top scored for North Hans against the Indian team that just beat England. He averages nearly 35 in the blast this year for North Hans, just behind Chris Lynn and Jimmy Nation, and came within a hair's breadth of a ton with his 92 against Derbyshire. He's an exciting player in all formats of the game with runs and wickets for North Hans, who he first played for when he was just 15 years old. Uh, Saif Saib, a very very warm welcome. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Uh, well, uh, let's start right up to date and then kind of work our way back maybe a, a, um, a wee bit. Um, I don't know if you saw England last night. Uh, things didn't quite come off for them in, in Southampton. But when you played Indian, uh, India, it, it personally went pretty well, uh, didn't it? Um, you top scored. Uh, where were you finding most of your success coming against this Indian team when you when you faced them? Uh, it's, I, I guess it's just confidence of sort of from um, having a decent blast. Um, you know, I've been feeling in pretty good form, um, you know, going into most of the matches and uh, having quite, you know, that big, big score. And it was nice to sort of contribute like I did in the blast. But yeah, Indian players, you know, they're, you know, they're paid the big, big bucks for, for a reason. And, you know, towards the end, you, you could see why. Um, but yeah, it was an absolute to sort of play against some of the you know world's biggest games and uh, and you know some of them coming up to me and saying you know well played and you know, I thought you did really well you know especially someone like Vivius Laxman like coming up to yeah. me and saying just ridiculous like uh, I, yeah definitely taking a lot of confidence from that. Do you find that as being very kind of uh, inspirational when you look at what they went and did to England when you look at the depth and cost let's be honest of, the, of some of that, that talent and how it, how it how it grows through the IPL do you do you do you feel that getting noticed in a game like that is um, kind of a, a big step for you um, yeah I don't think I, I would have got noticed a lot um, <laughs> because I, I didn't win the game so I well, think if, true. If, if we won I think it might have been a bit of a sort of a difficult story but um, but like I said, it's it's more for 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 my own like sort of personal sort of growth. Um, you know, playing against some of the world's best, they get paid you know a lot of money to bowl in a certain area. Especially someone like Harshal Patel. You know, he's um, obviously one of the leading wicket takers the last few years, and um, you know, playing against someone like that, you know, that's that's where I aspired to be, and it was um, it was just a test of sort of where where I am at the moment. Um, do you spot any weaknesses? You could be telling Josh Butler about. <laughs> it's, Not that uh, I'm going to turn you into Matthew Mott, an England coach, but any any advice for Josh? Just pick the inswinger. <laughs> what was that? Sorry, pick well, yeah, after last night. Gosh, well, it came off his brushed his leg, didn't it, on the way through? But what a delivery it was! What a delivery it was! Um, well, let's let, let's find out a little bit, if we may, about you. Now you're from High Wycombe, aren't you? Yeah, uh, I used to go there a lot on business. Worked with J and J there many years ago. Um, when did you know really that cricket was going to be the thing that you wanted to do in your in your professional life? How did, how did that sort of come to be? Um, so I, I was good um, academically. That I sort of I never really paid a lot of attention in school. Um, mm. I was always I always had this thing for cricket and sports in general, um, and I absolutely love playing cricket, especially um, you know. From a very young age, going with my dad to go watch mm. it um, down at the local club, and you know, just playing there, you know, with with my brother and and my cousins, and uh, you know, like sort of every day after school would would play after school, and you know, like sort of when I was about maybe, I, I think I knew from a re from a reasonably young age that this is what I wanted to do. Um, it, it was just a matter of case. Um, you know, am I good enough? And I, I was lucky enough to have when I was younger to to showcase that. And um, you know, now I've been here for the last you know, nine years, um, which is a very long time. You know, considering yeah. I'm I'm still I've just turned twenty four. So um, you know, a lot of people say you know you I'm still one of the youngest in the squad, which is actually pretty pretty mind boggling. Um, yep. Nine, but it, it's nice because. You know, I've I've got that experience. Um, you know, like like you were saying earlier about showing to the younger younger sort of lads, and um, you know, just passing my experience and sort of. Um, but I feel like I've I've learned a lot over the 
last you know few years especially um i think first few years obviously you're still trying to find your feet um especially in the professional game mm-hmm. different but um last few years i feel like i've definitely um i've definitely feel a lot maturer in myself um I feel like there's a lot of good change happening around the club and um and i'm i'm pretty happy with where, where i am at the moment it's really interesting when you when I hear you say that because it, it's it's in some ways you know it's a professional sport people watch you do it you are in a, a spotlight but but you could speak, speak to people in a many number of careers and and they all go through the same development and the same changes in a way they just kind of don't do it so publicly a lot of the time um you um you first played for North Hans when you were just 15 I think uh, I, I think it was um, New Zealand, yeah. Yeah, well, that was in that was, and there you go. You played it actually, maybe even younger. When was it against Durham University? You were sort of hauled in. Yeah. Um, what can you What can you remember about that? Uh, I can... <laughs> um, it was uh, so it was at Durham University. Um, my dad drove me up mm-hmm. long drive, especially from. Um, and I, I managed to uh, score, I think I was 19 in the first innings. Um, and I played a bit of a rash shot, uh, trying, trying to work uh, out, out of, uh, back, back to high wicket, really. Um, and second innings, I actually managed to get a 50, which was, um, which was actually quite nice. Uh, it showed that sort of, because the guys I was playing with, you know, some, someone like David Sells, you know, uh, I think he was in last year or second last year. And playing with someone like that was just, um, unbelievable you know he scored a lot of runs for the county um it was someone that i looked up to uh, in terms of you know r- like run scoring how he does it with such ease and um you know just how he was and it was um it was amazing and someone like ben duckett as well um i'm with him uh, obviously he went through the england age groups and that was something that i wanted to do um so I-, I looked up to him as well and you know playing with those guys it was uh it gave me a lot of confidence, um, you know, to see that they looked, oh, you know, this guy can play type thing. Um, can you remember what was going through your mind when you faced your first delivery? So you're 15 years old. You're it, it wasn't um, it wasn't uh, a first class game, not designated as that. But I don't suppose that was troubling you so much at the time. <laughs> and you're going out there to face your first ball for a, for a, for a county team. Can you can you remember the ball? And can you remember what was going through your head? I, I can't it... remember the ball, but I just remember just it, it felt like I'd, I'd it was just like a normal match. I didn't feel like there was first class debut the year after. I remember I was absolutely crapping my pants. Uh, <laughs> like I, I was, I was not off ten, uh, and I, I managed to get a duck. And oh. I was was yeah for I think yeah, I was sixteen. At, yeah, it was my. F- I was at Kent, and um, uh, and I I done. Um, Rob Key was a. Um, he came to. Uh, so my uncle had a has a his own little cricket academy back mm-hmm. here. Rob Key came to coach a few of the game, a uh, few of the sessions, and um, you know, obviously we got acquainted there, and obviously he was playing that match. So he came up to me. He was like, "Don't worry, mate. You know, everyone's got plenty of ducks in their career. So just sort <laughs> of." Sort of, it only it only gets better from here. So <laughs> I guess you know him saying that. I guess um, you know he was he was right. I guess you know it only does get better from here, and you can't you can't keep getting ducks for the rest of the rest of your career. I guess. And Joe luckily, Root, I- Joe Root made win this summer. You know it happens. It, it yeah. will happen to everybody, and it will happen again. <laughs> yeah. uh, actually, you 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 kind of touched on one of one of my next questions for you, really, because it was for a younger player who's really making an impact. How important is it when you're at somewhere like Northants that, that being one of the younger members of the team, you've got the likes of Gareth Berg, Luke Proctor, who have you got? Josh Cobb, Ben Sanderson. These are guys that have been around the block a bit. So as well as your young talent, you've got a group of players there who kind of really know their way around. Do you, do you find that a very useful kind of support and, and help to you? Yeah, for sure. Uh, I mean, you know, s- some of the guys that you just mentioned are absolutely, you know, done a lot for not a phony for us, it's for sort of first class cricket and T20 cricket, you know. Uh, you know, like someone like Kobe, you know, he's got overseas, you know, playing like BPL, playing, uh, you know, playing all these uh, 
uh, all these tournaments that, you know, has always been my aspiration. Um, so, you know, rubbing shoulders with some of these guys is, it is cool, but it's also nice that they see me as, as one of them uh, rather than, you know, just, oh, just another youngster type thing. Um, yeah. Was when I was a bit young, which obviously is naturally going to happen when I was a bit younger. But like now, they sort of see me as you know a bit, a bit more of the core of the team rather than you know just someone who's coming in every now and again, which I feel like I was a little bit at the beginning. Well, they put the um, you mentioned it actually. Your list A debut was back in two thousand and fourteen. I mean, you know, you're let me see, you are three months younger than my eldest son. <laughs> And you were playing your list day debut in 2014. Um, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't uh, Hampshire, Sussex. It, it was thrown in against New Zealand. Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, what did that feel like? I mean, that's a real kind of sink or swim deep end debut, isn't it? Yeah, that was um, that was scary because we didn't bat because um, I remember it was. They had very, very quick bowlers um, that day. Uh, I think like ben, um, Wag- I think Wagner might have played. Um, Adam Milne, Matt Henry. Uh, these guys were bowling like seriously. And um, luckily we didn't bat because, you know, I, I wasn't really um, looking forward to it, shall I say. Mm. I bowled and we they scored a lot of runs. Um, from what I remember, I think they scored like 440 or something ridiculous. Um, I only I managed to get three overs. First over was nice, and then second over got smashed. So, so but it was it was cool because um, I had quite a bit of my family. Um, there's I think I had like 40 or 50 members of like sort of uh, my family and extended family uh, watching, and it was a bit nerve wracking because I was fielding um, sort of under uh, like where they were and you know they kept shouting my name and it was the first time I was sort of ever been in that environment where there's like crowds to watch come watch play and stuff like that so um it was a cool experience uh it's just a shame that um actually it's not so much a shame that we didn't get to didn't get to bat because I, I yeah. didn't yeah it's, so, it's still pretty it's just still a great achievement I can tell you as a dad it doesn't matter <laughs> kind of yeah. in here it's just you know you you face every ball, <laughs> you bowl yeah. every delivery, <laughs> and it's it's quite hard work, but it's 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 unbelievably rewarding. Uh, well, let's let's move on and talk about the blast a little bit. Uh, now, this season's been, a, I think, a bit frustrating for Northants. You had two no results, uh, and they could have made the difference between not qualifying and qualifying. Um, did you feel that were it for that, you were well able to have been in those quarterfinals? Um, like I said, it, it was a bit disappointing. Uh, I think Worcester away, we, we definitely um, felt like we could have won that. Um, mm-hmm. And also, not away as well at Trent Bridge. And uh, I think we had them 130 for nine or eight um, after 19 overs. I think we could have, well, we would have definitely backed ourselves to sort of get go out and get that total, especially at Trent Bridge. And uh, those two games... Obviously, a disappointing, but I, I don't think we can um, say those, that was the reason, I guess. Um, you know, it was a disappointing last, you know, four or five games for us. And, um, you know, especially in the positions we were in, yeah. uh, getting some big scores on the, to- on the on the board and not being able to defend. So it, it was a bit disappointing, but, you know, it, it was great experience for myself and, you know, good learning for, for everyone. Hopefully next year we can, you know, put those wrong and them to some good rights. Well, it, for you, it's gone pretty well. I mean, 92 of 58, I think, against Derbyshire. 74 of 32, I think, against the Bears uh, back at Wantage Road. You're averaging 35. Um, that said, that 92, you were run, <laughs> when you run out with just two balls of the innings left. How did that leave you feeling? Honestly, was that was it anger and frustration, or were you happy to have made played such an important knot? I, I feel like I did um, what the team needed um, at the time. Um, well, I needed to get back on strike, you know, because um, like you said, there's only a few, a few, a few balls in the innings. But uh, I felt like um, I felt really happy that you know I, that was my first proper full contribution mm. for the for funny stuff. So. Um, Nice, but it was just a shame that we couldn't quite get over the board. Um, 
with the win, um, which is very, very frustrating because when you do score runs, you want to be able to obviously get towards um, a winning team. But um, but hopefully next year there will definitely be many more to come. What do you feel has really clicked about your white ball batting this year? Because you've certainly batted, I mean, you're, you are an all-rounder, but... Your batting seems to have come more to the fore, particularly in the in 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 the blast. If I'm if I'm right, what do you think's really clicked this year? I think it's um, just having a clear sort of uh, role in the team. Um, I got told I was batting at four this year, which I was really really happy about. Um, you know, I've I've waited for a long time to you know, come up the order, especially in T uh, twenty stuff. The last couple of years, I've been batting at six seven, only facing you know ten fifteen balls max, and you know, I had the chance to sort of that really and uh just just sort of clear plan you know having clear focus on what i want to achieve and what i want to do and um yeah and this sort of the backing of the, of the coaching team and the captain um and the team really and uh it, it was nice um yeah because they gave me just a clear role just said look say we believe in you we trust you uh and that gave me a lot of confidence and uh it was like i said it was nice to you know score a few few runs and prove you know sort of some people right and mm. you know um but like i said it, w- it would have been even even nicer if you if we won you know got through to some these quarterfinals and hopefully finals there yeah well that because was it 2016 north Hans won it didn't they but that was just a little bit too early for you i think were you I there was, that was, day or were you both man i was both man that day um, oh wait wow there you go and i think it was 29, 2018, I think we were in the final. Yeah, you were. You were, yeah. you were. It was, it was two years, consecutive years. What, the year you won, and then the next year, I think you also made the finals, if, I, if my memory serves me. 2017. It was against Lancashire, that final. I, yeah. I wasn't, that's why I feel like we lost. So. Yeah, <laughs> well, I guess. Yeah, it's odd, man. Now, you made your first class debut, uh, 2015, against Kent. Uh don't think that was... I don't think it was a huge day for runs I think, for you, or four days for runs. But would it be fair to say that your standout uh, moment was that maiden ton against Sussex in 2021? 100%, yeah. That was... Um, it, it was a long time in the coming, really. Um, you know, I, I feel like the winter sort of into, um, into the season last year, I felt like I... That was probably the best winter I had in terms of working on some specific stuff and all credit to uh, John Sadler. Um, you know, he was our batting coach at the time and uh, we sort of just worked with just small specifics and um, um, get that 100 was, um, there was a lot more to it than just that 100, I feel. Like sort of, uh, there's a lot more, like a lot of hard work and stuff behind, but Hopefully, it's the first of many. Um, it was a bit disappointing this year. Uh, you know, mm. I, um, I still feel confident. I've just got to work hard, and hopefully, I can get that feeling back again. You know, of scoring many more hundreds for the county. Um, but, um, but yeah, it was a special moment. Special moment. What went through your mind when you raised your bat to celebrate for that first, first, first class ton of your career? Was that Hove? Wasn't it? Was it a Hove? If I remember rightly. Um, yeah. How do, I mean, try, can you sort of try and put into words? Because I think when I read the account that's up on your on the North Ants website, it talks about two thousand four hundred something days in the making. Yeah. I mean, that, just can you can you try and sort of convey the feeling of when you get to that three figures and you're raising, you're, you're, you're taking your helmet off, you're raising your bat. To, to be honest, I, I don't think I, I I could explain it words. Um, it was just a relief, I guess. Uh, you know, I've you know worked so hard, you know, to try to get to this spot. Uh, you know, I've jumped about the moment for God knows how long. Yeah. Uh, and just you know, so I finally do it. It was just sort of, it was just a relief. It was just like a sort of a weight was lifted off my shoulders. You know, I've got that hundred now. Like it's sort of but, it's a box ticked. Big yeah. box, big and important box, but still a box ticked, right? But. Now I'm hungry for more, so sort of I want to get that feeling. Multi- um, like I said, it was disappointing this year, but you know there's still a lot of cricket to be played. Season, 
hopefully I can um well I'm very positive that I can make more of an impact especially the four day stuff in the in well hopefully this year or and the years to come who have been the biggest influences on your career I know once you've made that ton you you um Phil Rowe was quoted quite considerably um uh, and other Rich Hudson I think you talked about tell us about one or two of the people who have really nurtured you on your way to 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 get you to where you are now i think i have to give a lot of credit to um phil Rowe and and david ripley um you know f- from a young age uh like phil Rowe, you know he was um people that sort of brought me in uh, he wasn't the academy coach and um sort of worked alongside him for the last you know however however many years and uh, he's looked after me, um, especially as a as a young lad, fourteen, fifteen year old coming in. Um, you know, he, he has trips as well. You know, for giving me a chance, and um, you know, believing in. When sometimes I felt like no one really believed in me, and mm. you know, gave. Uh, so those two, I'm um, yeah, forever. You know, grateful for for the opportunity, and you know, having the faith in. Self, and hopefully, I can one day I can repay them. Um, I scored some big, big runs for the county, which would be really nice. Uh, I saw Phil, you know, a few. But I see he mentioned how well I was playing, and probably the best he's ever seen me play. And coming from him, you know, he's seen me from you know growing up as a fourteen-year-old, um, you know, coming in for a trial at Northampton, and you know, some, and obviously now, you know, he's seeing me sort of uh, score a few, score some money, and yeah, it's nice. It's uh, it is a nice, very, very nice feeling. But yeah. Those two are forever. speaking as someone who only ever got a second eleven fifty in about the third division of the Middlesex League. Then I, I, you, know, you, you have my you have my fullest admiration. Um, this year in the championship, uh, you've only lost once, but six draws. Um, it's Canter- Canterbury again on yeah. uh, Monday. Uh, do you know yet if you're featuring for that one where you made uh, your debut? I'll... No, no, I won't be. I won't be. Unfortunately. Aren't you looking at the weather? It's going to be a baked pitch. Isn't that yeah. what a slow left armour wants? And a batsman? <laughs> yeah. yeah, unfortunately, I've only bowled one over this year. So yeah. it's, all, it's a bit it's, it's a bit dis- disappointing. But at the same time, sort of, we have, you know, very, very good spinners, especially in the T20 stuff where I felt like I had you know, a bit more of an impact. But um, that is what it is. Um, I've just got to just go back and sort of go back to the drawing board and work hard on my bowling and, Try to make sure that I'm I'm ready to go for next year, especially the T20 stuff. Well, as a player today, I mean, especially an all-rounder, uh, you're obviously I, I assume you're looking to play all different kind of formats, particularly at, when you're just 24. Um, do you feel equally comfortable in any one? And, and kind of how differently do you approach a white ball game, say to a to a four-day red ball game? Is it a mentally very different process for you, or or, or is it kind of basically go through the same? things to get you match ready um I try, I try to go through the same things sort of to get ready but um uh, mentally they are two very very different games um i personally prefer the t20 stuff um only saying because um i love the whole the thrill you know the music you know uh, the atmosphere, stuff like that and obviously four days a lot more mentally you know sort of um challenging uh, i'd like to say because, you know for a long period of time, you know, these demons, these men on your shoulders that everyone talks about, you know, they, they're always there. Um, but as in T20 stuff, I feel like you could just express yourself and sort of um, feed off the atmosphere. And, um, and yeah, I, I really, really enjoy that sort of... Um, well, well, <laughs> that said, watching England, I think we've entered a sort of a parallel universe, haven't we? Because the Test cricket has been flying along like white ball stuff. And like... <laughs> Last night for a while, they were just struggling to get it off the square. I thought somehow the T20 had turned into t- test matches and the and the, the test matches were being played like um, T20s. It was kind of extraordinary stuff. Um, let's look at, let's. can I take you forward a bit to the unknown of the future? You know, yeah. So if you're looking back three years from now, um, what do you think success will look like as you, as you look back as a, 27 or 28 year old obviously you're nowhere near the end of your career but um what 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 are some of the landmarks you'd like to have think think right that i've done that that's a, that's big that's important now i'm going to move on again 
Um, so, what, like personally, or are you talking? No, about... no, you personally, very much you personally. This is very much about you. Um, well, I'd I'd like to um, personally, I, obviously, I'd like to make a lot more meaningful contributions to to the county. Um, that's a big part of my game that I'm trying to work on, being a lot more, uh, being that sort of consistent performer. Um, I think. Personally, I, I'd love to, you know, get into a couple of these drafts, um, you know, t- like 2020, like the 100, um, a few little T20 sort of stuff around the world. Um, that's my own, like, sort of personal um, sort of little boxes that I want to tick. Mm. Um, with 100, you know, obviously, there's a lot of hype around it at the moment. Um, uh, and, you know, a lot of talented players are coming you know the uk and you know well as as it as is the plot i mean you're playing with the likes of chris lynn jimmy nisham not to mention some yeah. really great i mean you had was paul was it last season you had sterlo at uh, north hans oh uh, yeah uh, i mean you've had you, you you have some fantastic talent that um that comes through north hans but yeah i could it you're kind of talking a little bit that the white ball is your opportunity for Growth, expansion, recognition—not exclusively, but I, but I'm sensing it's you, you've got it targeted as a, as, a, as as perhaps a priority. Would that be fair? Yeah, I, uh, white ball. I've always seen as my strength. Um, uh, sort of, I, I can sort of hit three sixty and bowl. I can field, um, you know, quick between the wickets, and you know, I, I feel like. Uh, I feel like with my white ball cricket, I've got a high ceiling. With red ball cricket, obviously, I still feel like I've I've got a lot to offer. Um, I want to still score hundred big hundreds. You know, not only for will I be a satisfaction, you know, for uh, for myself, but more my my own mental sort of game um, for these big hundreds. Um, uh, but at, at the moment, obviously, you've got you know the fifty over stuff uh, starting. Um, and then, yeah, sort of uh, got to work hard in the winter, and you know, see see, see where that takes us. If I can, um, and then yeah, work hard, and hopefully, you know, next year I can have another good blast. And you know, you, you never know. Maybe you know, hundred or you know, a couple of these drafts will, will come calling. And Lions, England, who knows? Yeah. Um, what when you're not playing cricket? <laughs> when you're not making runs and taking wickets for North Ants. Uh, what do you like to do that you can tell me about? <laughs> you can tell- well, at, at the moment, it's, it's wedding prep. Um, I'm actually getting November. So um, at the moment, that that's taken a bit of priority. So I've got a couple of days at home now and just sort of got to go through a few stuff. Um, um, oh. Yeah, usually I just, just like to chill out, really. Not, not, not too... Um, not too much. I just I, I like to stay at home, play PlayStation, just a regular sort of twenty year old, like twenty year old, whatever. Well, my one bit of advice to you will be this: if the lady ever asks you which which was better, marrying me or getting that first hundred, you have to answer definitely marrying you. Uh, <laughs> oh, well, otherwise, yours would not be shoes I'd want to be in. <laughs> definitely the hundred. Definitely the hundred. Oh no, man! Don't say that. <laughs> um, last question for you. Uh, so, uh, any what would be your advice to young cricketers who are working their way through the county systems or the different age groups? You know, if I'm 13, 14, and I think I might just have something, boy or girl, um, what 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 do you think it takes? What, what's what's looking back so as you've been through it? What what would you be saying to a young person at that sort of stage in their cricketing life? I think. Um... Just gotta enjoy it. I think, sort of, um, like from a personal point of view, like last couple of years, I've really. I think the years before that, I was too many sort of external um, factors. Mm. Uh, I mean, you know, when you think about contracts and stuff like that. But the main thing is you have to enjoy it. Um, yeah, and that's what I keep telling myself every, every uh, you know when I'm, you know, batting or when I'm, you know, in the field, you know, I just enjoy the moment. Like, you know, you, you everyone gets so caught up in, oh, this is what his average is. This is what his strike rate is. This is what this is. 
this is, but you know, you have to enjoy the moment you're playing because at the end of the day, um, you know, you're you're playing cricket. Like, sort of, there's nothing better than yeah. playing cricket, especially in in front of a packed out crowd. You know, when you got people, you know, abusing you from the crowd. You know, it's 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 all part of it, and it's it's got to, you just got to enjoy the moment and enjoy playing cricket. And I'm I feel like last couple of years I've had that enjoyment come back into my cricket and now I feel like as in that enjoyment factor is uh, it feels like it's always been there when you know I, I know for a fact that some there's been one or two years where I was just a bit you know um, not enjoying it as much but now I feel like um, yeah like just got just enjoy it like as in I, I absolutely love cricket I love talking about cricket I love playing cricket I love coaching cricket and you know it just you just got to enjoy the game as much as you can well we enjoy watching you play um so save it's been an absolute delight to get to know you a little bit thank you very much for your time good luck with those wedding preparations thank you very much <laughs> and um uh, we uh, look forward to seeing and hearing lots more about you uh, into the future thank you <laughs>